Welcome back to No Lab Boat Building. I'm Mark Rudin and we're working on the 2.4 meter project and today we're going to work on the skeg. Now the skeg is this little portion on the hull that's aft of that tuck area. If you recall we had a little transom there and the designer Hazi Malmston suggested that I deal with finishing out that portion of the hull by just doing like a little carved piece of foam or balsa wood or something like that. So this is going to be my interpretation of how to complete that portion of the boat. Now the reason that we didn't incorporate that earlier into the planking scheme is because the curves get so tight down there it's just not worth it. Plus there's a hard hard joint between that skeg and the lower portion of the hull here, the counter. And to create a hard turn like that, a 90 degree turn, meant that we would have to put some sort of structure into the hull to accommodate that. And that was going to make things considerably more complicated than just planking right over this and then parking the skeg on top. So that's what we're going to do. So without further ado, let's go get to work. I mean, this will start out just as a plywood template, but I think I'm going to leave it in there because I think it's going to give some good structure. And if anybody ever put weight on the back end of it here. I'd like to have something that's rigid inside. Perhaps you'll remember we made this template when we were building our mold and we used it to fare in the tail end of our keelson. I've got a little block here that the rudder is going to sit up against and basically this is just adds as it's like a little fairing where the leading edge of the rudder really just hides in here. And I'm going to fill this with uh, styrofoam and then carve it to shape. And so I just want to give myself some uh, building blocks to do that. So I'm going to create a little base for it here. I've just got some really light red cedar that I'm going to glue onto this guy. And I got one on the other side as well. A bunch of my drafting ducts are uh, keeping it from shifting around. And I just need to figure out a shape in here. And then I'm actually going to make another little one of these guys that will go in here and I'll describe the shape of the, this little transom onto it. I've got this little batten I'm going to use to try and fare in this shape right here. So I'm just going to, if I press it into position, and I hold it there with, the, with the, uh, one of the ducts, I'm using another one over here to spring the batten out. Now I've all often talked about sp over springing your battens to continue the shape and, and it's m no more apparent than right here where if I don't spring it, you'll see that it doesn't ever want to really quite sit properly. But if you look right here, as I spring it in, there's a little shadow line. And by the time I flatten it out there, if I'm just pushing to try and get a, get a nice shape on this guy, it doesn't really want to go there. I want to put a weight back here and, and push that out a little bit. Suddenly that works pretty good. And I get a decent looking shape in there. So that just means I know I've got a nice continuation of my form. So back here, this comes into a little fillet and then it turns into a sharp um, transition right here. So it's a bit hard to pick up the exact line of this. We'll see what I can do. I don't want to overdo it. I'd rather have it. I'd rather have it be a bit blunt than have it be too hollow because I wouldn't want it to have suddenly dink and then a sharp turn like that. So I'm going to bring this up here. I can always curve it more hollow if it doesn't seem right. And then with a flattened pencil, I'm just going to trace off the inside here. There we go. So I'll take that, and I've got one on the other side, and I'll gang them up together and cut them in one, t in one shot. And at that, the very least, that's going to give me a nice template in order to do, at least rough shape this down to get it close to this shape. And then I think I'll probably do a temporary install on the boat and use some long boards to really fare this in nicely by eye. And then I'll take this off and I'll glass it over and, and then we'll finally reinstall it once that's all done. So, so far so good. I'm liking the way this is coming out. I really wasn't sure how I was gonna do this. At one point I thought I would strip build this, but no, nah, it's not worth it. This is gonna be far, far simpler. Okay, so I'll just use a little scrap of quarter inch ply here for my backing board. That'll give me a little meat for some screws to hang on to when I screw in from the uh, back side. I'm just going to trace around the back and then we'll do the, you know, make one to match on the other side as well. Okay, now it's time to put this together. And I think I'm just going to um, 
I might just do it with cyanoacrylate for the moment, and then maybe I'll just run little epoxy fillets in there. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. So I'll just tack it together with cyanoacrylate, and then I'll use epoxy fillets to make it a permanent bond, and then put my foam in last. I don't want to glue it to the boat itself. This looks like I might be doing that right now, actually, by accident. Ooh. Should break free if I'm careful. Okay, I'll give that a few seconds and then I'm gonna try and <laughs> weasel it off because I think I just glued it in place. Okay, let's see. Ah, uh, damn it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, God, Mark. Idiot. Ah, oh, there we go. Nice. That makes me happy. This is our wooden framework we made before, and I've just filled it with little chunks of blue styrofoam. And it's really just a question of fairing it out. This stuff is a bit weird to work with. You've got to be kind of fairly gentle with it, despite how soft it is. And I'm just letting the wooden form sort of guide me. So obviously, I've got this sort of curve that has to happen here, and then down on the bottom. We've got, uh, you know, that bottom template, which is guiding me uh, in that orientation. So between the two, I'm able to sort of work this down into a fairly nice organic shape. And you can try whacking this down with the tape, with the bandsaw and stuff, but it's really working with foam on the bandsaw is fine if you got one piece that's lying flat on the saw. The moment you try and do some weird stuff with it, it is very susceptible to grabbing and sort of flopping over and binding, so it's really quite super dangerous to cut. So I just basically went with a bare minimum of cutting. I needed to get it into the form here. And the rest is just going to do it by hand. Foam is actually kind of fun to work with. Um, the biggest downside is this stuff gets absolutely everywhere. And I've just used uh, 3M Super 77 to bond this in place. That stuff is made to hang on to foam amongst just about everything else on the planet. And I've got a uh, this fairing baton I'm using here. It's got just a slight bow to it in one direction. Just trying to keep this sort of sort of loosely follows the um, the shape of the top here. I didn't do that on purpose. It just a piece of plywood grabbed happened to have a bit of a bow to it, so I decided to make use of it that way. So you can see how quickly we got down to there. The biggest challenge is really just holding this little object in place, which is why I've got this block of wood glued onto it. Just using hot glue. So I really just work with very flat shapes until I get close to my finished forms and then I worry about fairing it all together. So like with all my sort of shaping of organic parts, you just you define your major parameters first and then you work down to your finished shape. go. 
close. Feels like there might be just a little fold down in here. It's hard to judge because it's such soft stuff. And of course, the light doesn't play off it all that well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skim this all out with epoxy mixed with an ultralight pairing compound. Once that's cured, we'll give that another fairing. And if, if it all looks good, then we'll get some glass onto it. All right, that to my eye is looking pretty good. Probably pop it onto the boat and just have a look there. So yeah, I guess we'll break it off. All right, so here we go. Now the test, of course, is we take our little batten we just spring it in place and we'll see how it looks. It's looking pretty good. I think I can take a little bit more material out of here. Yeah. Of course, you have to make sure it's in place properly. Yeah, it can stand to lose a little bit of meat. Looking really nice. I'm happy about this. those times where no matter what you do you can't quite get the results you're hoping for it's just like drywalling you run your knife in one direction it looks great but you really want to run your knife in both directions you just can never quite do that okay I'm just gonna have to resign myself to the fact that there's gonna be a bunch of fairing out that has to happen no matter what step away see I can't step away damn it I cannot step away well, the problem is this guy is not flat that's better Okay, I don't do a lot of glass in a small part, so I honestly don't even know what the best way to do this is. But let's um, we'll start with this. When you're taping off cloth, you do want to put a pull tab on it because trying to grab tape with rubber gloves is pretty much impossible. You also want that pull tab to be pulling in the direction that it is laying the cloth down, not pulling it up from your edges. That's really important. It's pretty easy to screw that up. So I'm just trying to get most of this covered first before I start messing around with the stuff on the back. Mostly just because as soon as you start getting near the raw edge of any fiberglass, it tends to sort of start picking up stray strands of material and I can't stand having my brush covered in that stuff. It just irritates me. And I haven't screeded this out or anything. There's basically an excessive amount of of epoxy on the uh, surface of the cloth here at the moment, but we'll get to that. I just wanted to make sure it's fully saturated first. That was my primary concern. There you go, see how easy that is. And what follows is a whole lot of fussing and fairing, which is pretty boring. So let's just jump ahead to the installation, shall we? Okay, well, we've got our little skeg here. And uh, this is really ready for installation. There's probably a tiny bit more fairing that has to happen, but I'm going to leave that for after it's installed because it needs to uh, get fared into the rest of this. It's going to be a slight difference in shape between there and there, and so we're planning for that all, all along. So if I butt this right up against it, um, I see that my center line feels like it's out by just a hair and uh, probably just you know it's just layers of fiberglass and stuff that have built up on the back side of this as I've tried to get this thing glassed over and filled. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to try a little shim here. Just use a stir stick. Just pop that in there. That looks just about 
perfect, I think. Before I can permanently install the skeg, I first need to drill a hole for the rudder shaft. Okay, when using Forstner bits, I find it is really helpful to have a pilot hole. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna chase that with a Forstner bit. Okay, here we go. So this is my one inch Forstner bit, and I just wanna go through the planking. I can just do this by eye in terms of the depth. So what I like about Forstner bits is they're a bit fairly easy to square yourself up because you can see as they start scratching the surface whether or not you're getting a square cut because it'll start hitting that surface fairly evenly all the way around if we do. As I drill this hole, I'm paying attention to the color of the wood chips. They're indicating as I make it through my first layer and second layer of planking, and then through the epoxy layer as I approach the keelson on the inside. And I want to stop short of the keelson. I can even see how I'm coming through my layers because we've got the, you know, obviously the brown mahogany, and then I hit a layer of thickened epoxy with that had some pigment in it. It's a little bit brown, and we hit our yellow cedar. Then we hit another layer of epoxy that was clear with just some colloidal silica in it. And now underneath that is spruce. And there we go. And as I come through to the spruce, of course, I get some slightly darker sprucey shavings. So we'll, that's as far as we're going to go with that hole. The next hole will come up from underneath and that'll be a little bit larger to accept the, the fiberglass tube. I previously fabricated a fiberglass tube by forming a bunch of fiberglass cloth over the rudder shaft that we're working with. And then I had to split that open to get it off the shaft and then glass it back together again. And it created a tube that's got a little bit of clearance and a small hole that's going to allow some water to pass through there that will help to keep that rudder shaft lubricated. That looks perfect. Okay, so I'll use one of my lofting ducts to try and stabilize this in place. Looks about right there. Add a couple more onto the sides here. Right there. Now to try and very carefully drill a hole from the inside to tag those together. I just wonder if I should put some more weight behind that. We go a little parade of whales to help keep it keep it parked. So all these weights are just to secure that skag in place. I need to climb inside the mold and drill a few holes to put some screws in there to secure it while the epoxy sets. Okay, so we've got some screws set up to go into this thing. Now we just need to drop it up with some epoxy and bond it in place. Look at that, perfect. Lend right on the center line. That's just to make sure we have a properly stepped up surface. Nice. Okay, we're just going to wipe this down with some alcohol. This whole area that I'm going to be working on. Make sure it's good and clean. Okay, good. Now to mix up some goo. Mm. 
All right, here we go. What I think I'll do is to go rake a quart, a layer of thickened epoxy onto this guy and skim it onto the other one. Now technically you don't need to add epoxy to both surfaces of this um, primarily because they're they're already coated but it's good practice to just make sure there's at least a light skin coat on there just to make sure that you've got you don't have a dry contact you know every everything that touches is moistened with epoxy I just think that's good good practice down here I don't really have a clear path to follow so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it a little bit it's kind of paint myself a triangle there we go now I don't mind if I have a crazy amount of squeeze out here because it's easy to clean up so I'm just going to make sure my whole batch of epoxy ends up in the joint. Okay, now before I stick it in there, I just want to quickly clean my hands off. I didn't, kept them pretty clean, but the cleaner the better. I've got a tiny little spot here on the side. I want to make sure I clean that up. All right, here she goes. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna go get my screws in there and then we'll work at sort of tooling out this joint. Now when it comes to tooling out joints, there's all kinds of tools you can use. I quite like using uh, these little painter's palette knives. I find that they've got a nice little bit of flexibility to them. You can squeeze into nooks and crannies nicely. But of course your typical painter's uh, putty knives are fine too. It's really just a question of what your taste is. Now I need a little bit of material for the other side, so what I'm going to do is just going to tool that in. So I got a nice soft little fillet in there. I'm just going to scrape this off. I am going to be putting some bearing compound on here, but for the, for the moment I just want to fill the joint. And so if you have another knife on hand, it's a good idea. I usually have a, a much wider one on hand for this kind of thing. Just having some place you can put that excess material that you got on your knife really help to make it a much cleaner job. It's down these little corners that it's so hard to sand out effectively that you want to try and be nice and neat. Now I got to be careful because my water line terminates right here at this intersection, and so I don't want a pile of thickened epoxy landing right at that point. I just want to see wood there. So that's also where our varnish terminates. So now we'll just very carefully a little solvent. I'm using alcohol on a rag here, and we're just gonna clean that off. So there we go. We've got our skig finally on here, and I've skimmed this out with a product called All Fair. This is basically a, an epoxy fairing compound, and I've it's pretty expensive stuff. Um, it's going to run you oh, at least about $300 for a gallon of this stuff.
but the advantage of it over regular epoxy is that it's got just a really good consistency. It, it kind of has the consistency of wood when it comes to fairing it out. Uh, compared to using other epoxies, even when you use ultralight fairing compounds, they, they tend to be pretty hard in comparison. So the idea here is that this is going to be a lot easier to fair out than using uh, another product. And it allows me to mix up a very small portion of it because it's a 50-50 pre-thickened con consistency. You have a hardener and you have a resin and you mix them together very much like Bondo. And uh, so when I'm doing other things like filling screw holes and stuff like that, it's a very convenient product to use over trying to mix up small quantities of epoxy. So I'm gonna put on my mask and we're gonna start fairing this out. hands are your best tools here. I feel kind of a spot right in here that just doesn't feel quite right. It doesn't flow properly. feels okay and then we get a little hump right in there. And I'm not sure if I should try and sand out the hump or if I should try and fill back here. That's a dilemma. A tiny little spot down here that's not quite right. So we'll continue fussing around with this area, doing some sanding and some filling here and there until we're satisfied. The last thing we want to do is get to the point where we put paint on this boat and then we see some humps or hollows. That would be really annoying. So that's it for this episode, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. What was I supposed to say again? Cue the credits. These videos are made possible by the generous support of my followers on Patreon. Special thanks to Zachary Holmes and Wes Willard for joining us this week. If you would like to help us out on Patreon, please follow the link in the description or maybe the one of the things up here in the corner. And that's it. Don't forget to subscribe. And all right, boys, it's a wrap. Smoke them if you got them. And I am out.